I'm Big Cow, and welcome to my world. Today, recent video game pickups video. As you can see, I have two piles. Uh, the first here is the video games I'll go through now, and tomorrow's video, which I'll record straight after this, is non gaming pickups. So, check out the video tomorrow to see what's on this pile. So, we'll start off with the gaming, and we have Kung Fu Master on the original Game Boy. And this is uh, essentially a sort of a sequel ish to the uh, the popular game Kung Fu, which um, I know more from the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. I did a review on that um, at the start of the year, I believe. Really fun game I used to play as a kid, and this is a, another cool version of it on the Game Boy. Although very difficult, I can't make it past the first boss yet. But cool cartridge to own. An N64 game I've been after for a while is Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. And this is a fantastic racing game, it really is. I've heard tons of great things about it, but until you really play it and you know see just how well the controls are, how fast you seem to be going, and the controls are just perfect, um, really, really fun. Um, I've only really played the first track just to sort of get used to it, but I look forward to uh, playing more of that. We got ourselves a Sega Mega Drive game to add to my wrestling collection, and it is WWF Raw. I believe this version of it, compared to the Super Nintendo one, has uh, some different wrestlers. I think there were sort of two different versions because they were released at different times. I think so. There's a couple of different wrestlers on this compared to the Super Nintendo version. Okay, moving on now to a Nintendo DS game. We have one I've been after for a while. It is Dragon Quest IV, the Chapters of the Chosen. Love me the Dragon Quest games. Um, yeah, so I currently have 6, 7, 8 and 9, as well as a Monsters game and uh, Swords on the, the Wii. I now finally picked up uh, the remake of 4. And I'm going to pick up the remake of 5 at some point as well. And then I'll have, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Which would be cool. It would be nice if we could get the first 3 here in English at some point. Hmm. Instead of fucking remaking a billion shitty fucking Final Fantasy games. Anyway. PS1 game now. As far as I'm aware. As far as I'm aware. This is the last... English released wrestling game that I needed for my PlayStation 1 collection, WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game. I had a ton of fun playing this as a kid, um, finally, finally picked it up, really cool. Still remembered some of the moves like The Undertaker's Chokeslam and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's just a fun, you know, arcade, fighty wrestling game. Fun. PS3, uh, get a game called Blood Drive. It's a vehicular combat style game where you do you know, attack other vehicles, but it seems to be mostly sort of uh, destroying zombies and weird mutanty creatures. Um, played it a little bit, was okay. Uh, for some reason, though, recording the footage, um, it was all in slow motion. It's happened before with a PS3 game, but I don't know why it happens. So if the footage looks a bit odd, that's why. Next, also for the PS3, Gran Turismo 5. Been picking up all the Gran Turismo games. Uh, haven't really started getting truly into them now, but it looks really stunning, and I look forward to really getting into it, learning and mastering the controls and driving and things like that. Oh, we have the GameCube. I just realised um, I haven't actually tested this game yet. Uh, got it. Uh, it is Wave Race Blue Storm. Love the Wave Race on the N64. Only got that um, last year, I think. Uh, was it last year? I think it was last year, yeah. And, uh, you know, really cool, really fun, great controls. I've heard that this one isn't quite as good, but I'm interested in seeing what it's like anyway. Um, so if there's footage on the screen, it means I finally got around to playing it and it works. Next. I got uh, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell for the Xbox. No real interest in the game. Um, I needed it for other purposes. <clears throat> yeah, basically I modded my original Xbox. But, believe it or not, I did not mod it to play you know, games. Emulated games, downloaded games, anything like that. I did it 
only so I could take advantage of the HD features of the component cable because for some reason they decided to remove the settings for the component cables here in uh, with the PAL Xboxes so you have to mod it and switch it to NTSC to activate it so you can get 480p and 720p with some games and even 1080i on the occasional Xbox game so that is literally the only reason I modded it, just so I can use my component cables and get better quality. More Xbox goodness, um, The Lord of the Rings, The Third Age. Uh, wasn't really aware of this game, and it's a you know, 3D open issue world style RPG game. Uh, it, it sort of looks like it's going to be an action RPG, but once you get into a battle, it's actually turn based. So uh, it looks really cool and really interesting. I did notice the controls were a bit iffy on a horse. Don't know if it'll be like that uh, if you get to move around on foot. But yeah, the controls are a bit iffy for that. But the combat, traditional turn-based um, RPG combat. So looks like it could be really interesting. And sticking with the original Xbox, an Xbox exclusive, grabbed by the ghoulies. And this was the first game released by Rare after they were bought out by Microsoft. This was originally developed for the GameCube, but then Microsoft bought them out, so they finished it up and released it on the Xbox. Um, it's kind of an uh, action-y, puzzle-y type game, I think. It's not so much a platformer as anything, but I uh, didn't play much of it. All the noise that the control seemed... Um, the, so the combat seemed really stiff, um, very, very, very stiff in fact, you know, trying to hit people was kind of difficult, but um, I would like to play through it at some point just to see what it's like. A more modern game for the Wii U, yes that's as modern as I get today, um, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, the uh, Nintendo Selects version of course. Been after this for a while because I love the Captain Toad levels in Super Mario 3D World and a full game of them. Yeah, really cool. In fact, I've already played through it, I've already uh, finished the game, I recorded all the footage, and this will be a review at some point uh, in the future. So, wait for that. And another game I'm already planning a review of that I've been playing uh, back to the original Xbox is SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. Been after this one for a while. Uh, it's been out of stock on the place I was looking for it that was cheapest. Uh, finally picked it up. It's a cool 3D collectathon style platformer where you have to golden spatulas instead of you know Mario style shines. And it's got all the humour of uh, the SpongeBob show, and it actually makes me want to watch it. So that's cool. I'm playing this at the moment, so again, this should be uh, reviewed at some point on uh, my channel in the near future. Okay, PlayStation 2 now, The Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction. Another game I've heard a lot about and good things. You get to play as The Incredible Hulk and you just get to maul things and destroy things and my phone just beeped. Um, and it is so much fun, you just, everything, almost everything's destructible and you can pick up cars and lob them at helicopters and you know, crash into people and yeah, um, really really fun and that was just the tutorial I was doing, uh, definitely want to play through that at some point. Another PS2 game, we have Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy, and this is sort of um, an action puzzly platformer style game where you, you switch between you know, Sphinx and a mummy, and they have different abilities they can do, and you need them to solve different puzzles to continue platforming. I never actually heard of this game until I saw... I want to say it was Nitro Rad. Check out his channel. He does a ton of uh, 3D platformer reviews of like really obscure, you know, B-grade um, platformers as well as you, you know, your bigger ones like Mario and things. Um, so I saw this on his channel. I reviewed it. Looked really cool. And I saw it in Sex one day. Picked it up. Dirt cheap. And lastly, should we be able to see what this was the whole time? Nintendo 3DS. Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World, the box set version of the game with the Poochie Amiibo. Look, it's a yard Poochie and it's adorable. 
and that will sit on my shelf next to the Wii U version with the yarn Yoshi. And those are my pickups. Also got some digital games, a uh, bunch for the PC, but there's always too many of those to remember. Um, I got some virtual console games on the 3DS. I got Pokemon Yellow, which I've already played through and finished. Um, I got the uh, 3D version of Streets of Rage 2, because it's fucking Streets of Rage 2. It's amazing. And also, um, uh, what's the game called? It's one of those weird, you know, Cute em up games, I think, was it originally on the Master System? Uh, I can't remember, but I'm sure you know what I mean. That one's in 3D as well, and that's really cool. So, those are my recent gaming pickups. Don't forget, check back tomorrow to see my non gaming pickups. I'm Big Count, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. Okay, just got a couple of things uh, to add on to the end of this video that came in the post um, the day after I'd recorded the original video, which was now yesterday, and it's Pokemon Gold and Silver for the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console. Uh, here in uh, the UK, I don't know if the rest of you it was the same, we got exclusive uh, special edition versions that come in these really cool boxes that mimic the original Game Boy Color versions and they look fantastic they feel from you know the quality is there it is Nintendo you know they look remarkably similar but I have a um, gold case here you know they look really really similar similar you know uh, cover and everything we've got Ho Ho there Ho oh, oh, whatever its name is, gold version. This one just tells the download code, obviously. Game Boy Color, Nintendo 3DS. Uh, the backs, um, virtually the same as well. Uh, the only real difference um, is the thickness of them. Um, the 3DS cases are obviously a little smaller than the Game Boy Color and even DS uh, cases were, so these fit in with your 3DS collection very very nicely so those are cool and then inside you just have the uh, download codes inside I've already put the silver on haven't put the gold on yet I've already started playing and I also love that Nintendo with the virtual console games especially the Pokemon they, they leave them intact so any bugs uh, exploits are still there and can still be done uh, believe it or not I didn't know until yesterday that you can get all three starters in these games using a simple like um, storage box cloning technique. Now back in the day when I originally had it I knew about trade cloning. You would both you know get a Pokemon, you would go to trade it uh, with the you know the uh, wireless, the infrared on the old Game Boy Colors and as it was in the middle of training you turn your system off and on and it would clone so you would both get a copy of that Pokemon and any item it held. Knew about that, never knew that you could clone stuff yourself. So there is a technique where you, you save just before you're picking your starter. You pick whichever starter you want, doesn't matter. Uh, you basically sort of go through the game until you get Pokeballs. And I did it so I captured two Pokemon. Doesn't matter which, two Pokemon. And then you go to the uh, Pokemon Center, the PC. You deposit your starter Pokemon, and in my case, I deposited another Pokemon. So there were two in there, and you still had one, so you, you could do it. So you deposit those, and then you go to switch box. When you switch the box, it prompts you to save. As it's saving, reset the game. Obviously, normally you turn it off and on. Um, in this case, you just press the touch screen, and it'll pause with the virtual console controls and you can restart the game from there then when you restart you load your save up and you're picking your starters you pick the next starter you wander uh, again to the, the pokemon center you don't have to go through the game this time to where you get pokeballs just go straight to the pokemon center and the pokemon you deposited are still there so you have your original starter and the other Pokemon you put in, which is important, take that Pokemon out so you don't have to mess about going through the story until you get to capture Pokemon. You take that one out, put the other, the, the other starter in, so now you've still got one Pokemon in. Um, then you switch boxes again as it's saving, reset, load up your game, pick the final starter, go to the Pokemon Center, all your starters are there. 
So I uh, have all three starters uh, in the game at the beginning um, for the first time since I originally played the game. Uh, and back then I originally did it using the uh, trade exploit. So that's cool. Yeah, so just uh, some extra pickups for uh, the video. So see you again next time. Thank you.